Hey, good evening. We're here to this evening with Sabrina Liu. And Sabrina, first off, welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Great. I um, I can't tell you. Uh, just I've been playing out like our. I, we haven't even had this conversation yet, but I've been playing out. I I gotta make sure I, I you know stay on topic and you know stay you know within these boundaries of of getting things out because I really want the audience to be able to to get Sabrina Lou because you you really are a special individual and I think it'll it'll come out uh, in this episode. But can you just do one thing for me, Sabrina? Can you just share a little bit about yourself and even your because you're not a teacher, but you are. But you but you are. You know. And uh, can you share a little bit about uh, just just you even having a, an, an influence in education, but also even your son, and tell your story a little bit? Oh, sure. Um, I think that I've been so fortunate because uh, I've actually been able to see firsthand because of my son um, methods and you know things that worked and things that made a difference. And, um, and that's gonna be very different for every single student. I mean, that's why it's individualized or that's why it should be, right? So I think that the main thing that I've always told, you know, I mean, as any um, special needs parent, you're basically, you know, you're set out there and, and it feels very overwhelming at first. And I've told every one that's ever asked me, I said, you're, what you need to do is gather all the information you can and ultimately follow your gut because nobody knows your child as well as you know your child. And um, no expert, no teacher, you are ultimately their teacher. You are, you know, you're ground zero. And so um, where I think that I've sort of lucked out in a way is that when we found things that really worked and um, I really wanted to just get trained in it as much as I possibly could. And then um, sort of lucked out in a weird way because a lot of this I've been able to learn from people that created it, from the people that like were on, were, you know, boots on the ground with the methods mm -hmm. and different things like that. And, and then I had such a strong desire to just go to that next step. And so when, um, when we started doing more AAC, uh, more sort of like traditional AAC, and we got into LAMP, I went to that training, then I got certified in that method, and then I went on and decided everything to do with edu educational technology just like spoke to me, and I thought, I'll go get a master's in educational technology, and what luck that I was able to do that pretty much all from home, because even pre-COVID, I found a program that was all from home. And it was wow. actually interesting because it was geared toward current um, teachers, current people working in the schools. And it was like, you know, you're, you're, you're teaching, go get a master's in educational technology just to be able to help your schools through that. And then mm. lo and behold, all of this stuff happened. Mm. And it seemed like everybody needed help with their technology. <laughs> And with what things worked in education and what things, you know, lent to that. And it was a bit interesting to see, I always thought my, my main core of students, uh, because once I realized how much this could help EJ, I thought, wow. And I actually think Gideon is probably one of the first students I ever saw after I was trained. Um, you know, I mean, we go way back from the uh, <laughs> gymnastics at the YMCA. When they're little, and, the boys were little, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So little. They're both, like, getting under the mats and just trying to get all that feedback. And mm -hmm. realizing how, uh, I think I think that's what's so interesting is the families you've met along the way. But then yeah. here it is, like, I think August of the, um, you know, basically middle of pa the pandemic mm -hmm. is when I finished my master's program. And... Um, and that sort of thing. So it was just a really bizarre sort mm. of lot, you know, how did we get here from there? But I, I, I feel very fortunate to have had the opportunities to get trained and then to see how those things could apply, what other students I could help 
but it was really bizarre to realize I suddenly, it wasn't all students, uh, non-speaking autistic mm. students. I had students with dyslexia who just needed mm. help. You know, they've got gaps in reading and reading comprehension and different mm. stuff like that. And so using different technologies that everybody has like voice typing, you know, actually like introducing parents to voice typing, they didn't even realize was already there in their Google Docs and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, go ahead, go ahead. so what you're saying, Sabrina, is that the technology and the some of the supports that you originally intended to support maybe students with autism and communication issues actually can help other more general students, correct? Is that what you're? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that what I mean, the best example in that in that little area would be voice typing. So how many students could be helped if they could just tell their stories first, the way they speak them, and then go back and learn to edit that. And how much exciting content could be put together by our young people who are who might have trouble typing or writing so and things like that. So voice typing is just like what it sounds. You speak into the computer and there's a transcript, right? Yep. Yeah. And it's gotten really, really good. Like it used to be very gobbledygook, right? It used to be like our texts, right? So, um, but it's, uh, it's gotten very, very good. And not only that, but a student using AAC, so using a speech generating device, you can put a message together, like a short answer to a question, right? So we were doing a lesson on apartheid or something and um, a student of mine was able to describe, you know, okay, so using your AAC, let's describe Nelson Mandela, right? And so then they're able to go in, uh, first black president, because we're specifically talking about South Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, and then in the, in the Google doc, we have that question, we have a, a space, we're working on the skill, use your trackpad, navigate, pre click, that, click that space. Now turn on voice typing, click the microphone, now press the message bar. And we do the exact same thing that we do in supportive communication, which is we start from the successful point. Mm -hmm. And then we say, okay, they already are very good at pressing their speech bar, like to make that thing speak. So let's get everything else set up. Let's open the Google Doc. Let's get to that spot. Let's turn it on. Let them do that one step. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to go and we're going to click the microphone and then click that. And then you just, you know, we build, we backwards chain it. We build the success. So we start with it because it's so important for them, for all students, for all people to see the end game, mm -hmm. right? And I honestly think if I had to pinpoint and I, and I, my hat goes off to all educators, all special educators, I know that the vast majority, the 99.9% .9 have are all, all in and want all the best. Sure. Um, I hate to say that sometimes in special education, it's so exhausting and there's so much going on and they don't have enough resources and they don't have enough staff, right? Mm. So they are trying to fit everybody into these molds and hoping that it works out. And they're also kind of restricted by what the schools have given them to measure, to make these, you know, determinations, to te take this data, to have all this stuff. And so it's a, they have this very linear building mm. block of hit this skill, then we're going to go to this skill, then we're mm. going to go to this skill. And the students are like, what is the end game of this? Because <laughs> so for instance, EJ had for three years, the same language arts and math goals. And the language arts goal was basically to sort upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet. Mm. So here he is going into the first grade or second grade, and I can't even remember, mm. but uh, with this same incredibly boring goal. And I said, you know, he can spell. He types and they're like, oh yeah, but if it's, you know, we know that if he's talking about animals, he can type and he's like college level. And I'm like, so you, instead of working with that, instead of being like, let's work on phonics with animals or whatever, instead of using a strength, mm -hmm. he's back here with this same goal that he's had for three years and identifying the numbers one through 20. And I'll always sit for three mm -hmm. years. And I'm like, you know, he can add. I, I don't get that. Why is he going to the second grade and not 
at least, you know, working on addition. So, um, that's, that's when I realized there's something a little bit amiss and there's yeah. this idea that, you know, some of the teachers just aren't as experienced or as attuned into different ways to approach, especially the non-speaking students. Cause mm. they, they're like, okay, well, can you read this sentence? Mm. Well, reading is one thing saying what you're reading is an entirely other whole group of motor skills going on to make that happen right? right we know that everything the articulators the tongue the jaw like all of that doing those things together that's really hard for our non-speaking kids right so even if they're I, I just want to interject, and I'm sorry, Jake. I, I, I know. No, no, no. I, I, I don't worry. I'm going somewhere else in a minute, but go ahead. No, no, because it's the second time in a row I'm asking a question. I'm not giving you a chance, but no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I really like it's. I want to underscore what you're saying here because, uh, um, and not and that it, it won't get lost on the audience is that your son had the same reading and math goal. It sounds like three years in a row. Just to and say this though, Ruben, my, my son also had the same goals for two, three years as well. Um, so very similar to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, the way you framed it is sometimes some teachers might not be tuned in. That's, that's a concern now because it's not just a document that we're writing. There's a child behind this and there's progress to consider because you, each kid is an individual. Now that sounds very basic, but some teachers might forget that. And what is his specific goal? And we can't lose that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would get reports like, oh, he did really well today because um, he stayed in the cuddle loop. And like, so because he stayed regulated, that was like a net win, right? So, and I'm like, what is the cuddle loop? It's basically like a big, like, um, like a thing that hugs him. And then they're like, yeah, because you know, some days he'll just roll himself up in the rug when he's looking for, he's basically bored out of his mind is pretty much you know, the idea here. He's a sensory seeker and he's not really getting any like educational or mental stimulation. They're just trying to like run the classroom. But yes, I, the thing is, is that sometimes those things happen where they don't, they forget about individual situations. There was a, another student in, in his class, absolutely wonderful kid, but entirely different, entirely different diagnosis, everything. Mm -hmm. And I only know because I, I know the, uh, the family that they had identical goals. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any sense at all. Yeah. I'm not gonna mention the names because Jacob knows right. them too. So, right. But you know what I mean? Like they had identical goals and I thought, these are two vastly wonderful kids, but vastly different on an education from an educational standpoint. Yeah. And so it just, that's when it really clicked to me that this, and, and, and like I said, I have great respect for sure. so many. And I know yeah. at the same school, you know, um, in the typical classrooms, they were doing amazing things. I actually think the school itself is doing amazing things. Mm there's it's just it's very very difficult to really individualize education for even like six eight kids if you are not sure how to approach those things and if you're sort of told you have to follow this thing yeah. right yeah, for and sure. one of the yeah one of the like things while he was still in school he was doing um, you know, I finally said, how come we don't get any worksheets or something? Cause I thought mm -hmm. maybe I can lend a hand. Yeah. So they said, uh, they sent like an Edmark, um, you know, reading thing. I'm like, actually, this is kind of a cool program. I like it. Well, you know, he, it would be like, draw a line from the picture to the sentence that it corresponds to, or like, or the pick word that it corresponds to. Mm -hmm. And he would get the worksheet in the class and take like a pen or marker and just color the whole worksheet like this. And then they'd be like, well, that's a zero, you know, so he's not, he can't read. And I said, well, that's bizarre. And so the first thing that I did was um, I thought, okay, we need something high interest. What does he love? For right now he loves Blue's Clues. So I drew four pictures a la, using my best Blue's Clues artwork. And um, then I, it, you know, if memory serves, it was like dog, pig, duck, 
some other animal, I can't remember. And so um, then I wrote those words on separate cards and set them down. And I didn't say anything. I just left them on the table. He just walked over without hesitation, boom, dog, duck, but, you know, just matched it all. And I'm like, okay, so he is definitely recognizing these letters and it definitely knows what they go to. So then on his homework, I took the whole entire shaded sheet that had a big zero and I've made a copy of it because I didn't want to cut up the actual worksheet. And I, and then I cut up the copy and then um, I did the same thing. I put the four pictures and the words and boom, he matched them. And, it, and this was sentences. This was like the boy has a ball or, you know, things like that. And then boom, 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 he matched them. And I was like, okay, so now, and then I thought, well, he's just reading the first noun, right? Cause these were all, and I thought still pretty darn cool, but mm -hmm. you know, I was still in that mode of he's still trying to recognize letters. Right. Yeah. So then, um, they sent home the next worksheet. And I got this feeling that they were like trying to find something he wasn't going to be able to do this way. Cause I was videotaping everything to show them as well. And so this time it was like two sentences about like the boy doing this and this, the girl doing this and this, so that there wasn't just, you could match the first noun. You had to actually look beyond that word. And um, what two of the things were, I think there were five sentences total. So this did take a little bit more. He had to t be patient enough to read more than just the first line. And I'll, what I remember specifically was for the boy, it was like one of them was ride a horse and one of them was um, plays with something. And when he, he matched one and then he ran around, he ran to the other side of the room and jumped really hard because he's a sensory seeker. So he like got lots of that proprioceptive input into his feet. Then he ran back jumped onto the bench we are we didn't have chairs we just had benches and um and then he matched the next one and it went, kind of went like that where he was getting a lot of input it was a little bit more cognitively you know demanding and when he got to the picture of the boy riding the horse he was also doing horseback riding therapy at the time he tapped it like in a very happy way. When I look at that video now, I, I realize he's probably saying, you know, that's me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't you think those- I'm the boy riding the horse. Don't you think Sabrina though, that and, and Gideon has the same stories as yours, believe it or not. And, and I know you and I have talked about it, but that for a couple of years, uh, like uh, Gideon's goal might've been um, spout cat and dog. And um, he could do depth. <laughs> His vocabulary is much more uh, higher end than that. And so after a while, I would think that maybe Gideon and even EJ were, were like, you know what, I spell cat this way, but maybe it's not, I keep spelling. <laughs> so maybe I'll spell it a different way because I seem to be getting these words all the time. And so I think that was one of the issues too, correct? I mean, that they're like, well. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think boredom for sure. But yeah, you've got to sure. get to a point where you're like, maybe that's not how you spell a cat. Or maybe that's right. not how they want me to spell a cat. Maybe like, you, spell you, know, you just sort of get yeah. like, and, and I think that they, our kids mm -hmm. in a way because you know different sensory things going on they'll just sort of pick up on those cues like sure. okay or 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 absolutely Gideon I think what always works really hard to rise right. to the occasion EJ not always so much he will he will absolutely be like wait I can just roll up in the rug and and so he would like they duct taped the rug the rug to the ground and he's still, he's just Always. like, cool, this is more fun because now I get to peel tape. And then he rolled himself up in the rug. And so, um, you know, that was, that was what he would do. And then they <laughs> would have to find him, you know, I would get a note that said, oh, um, we're going to, we're going to get him a one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to get him a male aide because uh, he ran, he ran really fast, got to the edge of the field and climbed up a 30 foot tree before wow. anyone could stop him. And then because nobody could get him down, he just hung out up there. <laughs> so, wow. so, but that's, uh, you know, and it's sort of like, yeah, this is, this is what I can do. And they're not, you know, what, what's my motivation for going in the classroom right now? Right. I'd much rather be in a tree. <laughs> you know what, Sabrina, uh, can I, we go back in time a little bit? 
Um, yeah, 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 sir. <laughs> because you know, when you're sharing that, I, because Ruben was was sharing, oh, he was concerned that I didn't have any questions. But I do. No, he didn't, not that, but but he was. I know, I know you were jiggling when you were, oh, you yeah. were we were in the conversation. But uh, that being said, um, what one of my how do I say this? One of the days that changed my li my life was um, a day you said, "Hey, Jake, uh, you think Gideon might want to learn how to um, um, not just." Uh, you know communicate but i go and, and spell and i'm like uh one second here i'm gonna have a little technical here issue but yeah um and i said sure and then we uh, there's a uh, just just for the sake of of our audience can you sure. explain who gideon is yes what, i'm sorry what so gideon, his, yeah. his disability is and sure. how this relates to sabrina Right, so EJ uh, is Sabrina's son and he uh, has autism and so uh, does Gideon, my son. And we've known, of course, um, Sabrina for years through YMCA and other uh, programs. And so one day, I can't remember where we were at, maybe it was at the kids' gym, um, Sabrina, but you mentioned about just communicating. And Gideon at this point, you know, he was, I think, seventh grader, maybe sixth grader. He was, uh, he never, you know, he could speak some words, of course, but not like a sentence or, so we were just trying to figure out, you know, we know Gideon's in there, but we don't, we can't hear Gideon, right? And so Sabrina mentioned this uh, program, or at least the support communication method, and I'm like, uh, and she goes, oh, EJ is finding some success, and I'm like, oh, that's EJ. Uh, and then I, I know I never told you this, Sabrina, but I was like, oh, I don't want to. And and so then um, uh, this one woman uh, you you recommended to us came to our home and started working with them. And I started hearing her share with them like, oh, that's good boy. And I'm like, what? And, uh, and he was communicating. And uh, I'm like, I can't believe this. This is not happening. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so that was happening. And eventually Sabrina took over because <laughs> um, I think it was distance and so forth. And then Sabrina, as she was sharing, she's getting her education, but she was, already doing it and and so they were um uh Orion, i'm sorry Orion, gideon would meet with sabrina i think weekly right sabrina and yeah. uh, and so then you would you carried on and he started communi uh, communicating um um talking um and so speaking um writing and now he gideon uh types on a uh, a laptop right this is like three four years ago right sabrina and so my question to you, Sabrina, is um, thank you. <laughs> but sorry, it's hard because, uh, you know, when your son communicates to you, tells you, you know, he loves you and it's tough. But um, for you, can you tell us a little bit about um, how that, what's that meant? I mean, when you discovered that and, and when EJ started communicating, um, how, did, how did that work? Well, we went, we were <clears> able, to go to go to the source, which really, really helped. And then it was, you know, about a year later, I went back and got trained so that, and, and it really is a lot of what we've kind of touched on here yeah. is that the first thing we're gonna do is just talk about, we're gonna just be talking about something interesting. Let's start with talking about something interesting. Cause I always said, I when I walked into a lesson, if there wasn't something about that that was interesting to me, then I wouldn't be able to be as engaging and I wouldn't be able to, you know, if I was just still talking like the red cat, you know, this sort of thing. And, and I'm talking to a middle schooler, right? Like it just didn't make sense to me. So we would start with like, let's, let's learn about naked mole rats, like a really bizarre little creature, but so incredibly interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just, just that kind of stuff. Start with something interesting. Now we're not going to magically expect right out of the gate, you know, um, yeah. he's going to spell, you know, this incredibly long, crazy word. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can certainly work on, if we're going to work on the word rat, let's work on it while we're talking about naked mole rats. You know, let's talk about it, you know, and then talk, ask questions like why, why do you think they would call them naked? Obviously no mm -hmm. rats are out there wearing like a suit and tie. You know, so do you think, it, and then show a picture and say, do you think it's because, you know, this one where they say it looks like a finger because they have this like kind of like skin colored body. 
you know, do you think it's more about the color or do you think it's more about the, you know, texture? And honestly, you're kind of going with what, whatever, there's not really right or wrong. I always try to like start off with, because what we know more than anything else, all of us are impulsive, right? Mm -hmm. To a certain extent. In autism, that's kind of amped up. And so uh, that's what's misinterpreted so often. So the whole idea is slowing down and pointing to this choice that I really, really want. And then I've pointed to my choice, but even if I pointed at the choice I didn't want, that just takes my lesson in a different direction and I spell a different word and I get it. Okay, this has consequence. When I make a choice and I chose texture i had to spell that crazy word out but and then we phonetically we build the word okay where we're we gonna get that t t sound t for te texture and then if if literally the thing is gideon already had good phonics there are some students i've let, had to build the whole phonics from ground zero because obviously at school no one no one introduced them to it mm. gideon picked up a lot from hearing it whatever it was he already had that sense so when you said Tuh. And you gave him a choice of maybe, you know, we start off mm -hmm. with like six to eight letters right there in that part of the alphabet. We're looking for the T sound. And then we're just getting to where we can point to just that one and not mm -hmm. point to something else. So like all the way down, he's thinking T, 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 T. And then like, it's like, oh, squirrel and points to something else. Well, that's why we're working on that. The whole idea is we want to get purposeful, but it's never about man, you're wrong, you know, which is a, unfortunately a lot of what they get in other situations and a lot of no and a lot of try again and a lot of this. And it's like, no, we're just going to breezily keep going through the word, through the lesson, keep it very interesting and, and motivating, but work on that skill of slowing down. So that first moment is sort of like, wait, stop, think, you know, it's like me going toward a plate of brownies. Stop, think, do you need that entire plate of brownies? Right. No, you know, right? Like stop and make that choice. And so that's a lot of what supportive communication is. I'm holding onto the board and I can see he's just going to stab at something before or before mm -hmm. we've even thought about it. Then I can pull the board back for a second and just say, okay, so what are we looking for? T, -t sound. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm obviously back in the room at this point. Gideon's like able to just move around a board. No one has to like do that. But yeah. that's what the idea of like the reset is. It's like, I can see that we're going to make an impulsive choice here and I'm going to help you succeed. So where are we going? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's sort of, and that's the kind of thing that you had to learn that was so different from the way that things had been approached before. So what you're it saying, like, it's, it's so important to have a, a positive communication partner somebody who's yeah. going to work because there's some people out there I, I've run across and I would say most people are very positive, but there's always sometimes people who don't believe in it or believe that the kid could do it. But if you're positive and you're, and you're like, you're sharing uh, Sabrina, just giving the, the guiding the student. Right. Uh, I think they'll be successful. Right. And that's a, the whole goal is start with the success, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to do to help them succeed. And then you just fade yourself back slowly, but it with, Again, it's not a straight line. Some days you're gonna need, they're gonna need a lot of support and some days you're gonna be able to like kind of sit back and other days you're gonna be like, oh, there I am having to like get in there because that, that impulsive choice is coming in. And, um, but it's absolutely about expectation as well. That's huge. And we know that from lots of studies about expectation, right? Mm -hmm. But I know from personal experience, like I danced most of my life and I was at this one thing. I knew the dance backwards and forward and this assistant choreographer came over. She did not want me to have the part because she wanted her friend and she was mad that I was getting it and not her friend. And she was giving off so much negativity that suddenly I couldn't do it. I couldn't do a dance that I knew I could do. It was really a strange moment, but that, that always sticks with me. Whenever there's someone not believing, even in the room, these, our kids, our students, every human being is, can pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And some of us go to like self-help gurus and overcome all of that. And we can do that. But you know what? How are we expecting that of our students that have had so much of their confidence pulled from them? You know, if we can give them opportunities to succeed, and see how when you slow down and make a choice, that that's a, that's a good thing, you know? 
that and then you know everybody wants them to jump straight to the ipad and here's a here's an aac here's a communication app just go here it is magically absorb how to do this purposefully well it's impossible so i i basically i remember when ej would just be like I want pretzels, 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 pretzels. And I've had kids that are like soda, 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 you know, and because it's fun and all this stuff. But now when we go to our AAC device, because we took the time by supportive methods to get him purposeful, now he can communicate on an iPad with anybody. And it's and it speaks for him. And then lo and behold, he's getting actually some more words. He never had even the clear words that Gideon had. You know, he was basically from when, when he when we pulled him out of school, he was like effectively mute. Mm -hmm. And so he's reading out loud now. Mm -hmm. Sabrina, you, I think you just Amazing. mentioned what you, you had mentioned a board. And, and I, I think you said what AIC device. Oh, AAC. Yeah. AAC so like device. A, is, is that what you're talking about by, by board? Is it something they could purchase or just find in schools? What, what exactly is this now? Well, actually, for the sake of, I probably have some. <laughs> so this, they're always handy. So this is basically like an A, this is obviously looks very complex because EJ is using 84, a grid of 84 at this point. But this is also what's on the back side. Mm. So that um, core words are like the most common words are going to be a one, 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 boop, you know, I've got, I've got want, I've got do, do, I've got go, I've got all of those words that 50% of what we say is actually on this front page. Wow. <laughs> but then anything that, that, like that's how core words work, right? And then anything else we'd call fringe words. And that's why, that's why you can't just teach the buttons because there's always gonna be words that aren't there, right? Mm -hmm. That you're gonna need to spell. And so that's why it's so important to get phonics and spelling going right from the get go. And sadly, it's like, our kids, they can't sort the upper and lower case letters because it's like a lot of stuff going on. And there's a lot of motor skill, a lot of pinch or grip, a lot of all that stuff. And then they're not taught phonics. Like it doesn't make sense to me, to be honest. But anyway, I think there's, there is a trend of trying to change that. But AAC is basically any communication. It's, so it's um, augmentative, some kind of change, right? an alternative, alternative to just spoken back and mm -hmm. forth communication. So it's a very big uh, umbrella. umbrella yeah. And you've got the high tech, which is on the iPad. So it'd be like this whole thing on iPad speaking for you. Each of these buttons leads to another page. You know, there's lots, lots of potential there. Mm. And then low tech, which I always think is really important with impulsivity. So like, if a kid, you know, student's going on and on and on on their high tech device, great. But then all of a sudden you can tell they've gotten impulsive. This is not what they meant to, you know, communicate. Um, you mm -hmm. can just grab, just kind of breezily grab at this board and say, oh, I'm sorry, did you want um, think or live? You know, so you're, you're just giving those choices. So we're talking about, you know, uh, something, something. And then you can say, okay, so go ahead and spell that out for me. So you're just really taking it because lo it's very hard to repeatedly ask for um, soda. You know, it's, I mean, if anything, like I've seen him go so fast on this and he's asking for something and he can get into a thing, especially if it's something that he really, really wants like target, target, target. And he can spell that like super fast, but, um, but it's still, it's still a great way to kind of rein in that impulsivity is is the lower tech so if i do say board that's generally what i mean is a, low a board low yeah low tech something you know this is just a laminated um yeah. stuff and then the high tech would be basically this kind of thing but yeah. on an ipad yeah or there's dedicated devices if you get it through your medical insurance you can actually get like dedicated big old devices with with these same very similar apps on them as you're sharing, um, can you speak to your family and how they, now you're, I, I've been around you quite a bit and I see how you work with DJ and um, even with my, my wife, I see her, how she works with Gideon. You, you guys are both superheroes in my mind. And the boys are, but so are the moms. But how about the rest of the family? Do they um, communicate with DJ? I know DJ's now orally speaking. I've seen him on, on 
Facebook. I go, wow, I'm so proud of him. And then and it's just, it is amazing. Like you said, he, I remember he wasn't really saying words and now he's saying sentences okay, and speaking. And so, but, but how about his siblings? Cause I believe he has two sisters and a brother. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and then even uh, his, his parents, uh, how, where, how do they work with him or do they, or how's that? Yeah, work? actually we're, we're super lucky because right from the get-go because um we everybody in the family started working with ej using all sorts of different methods what and it's basically that's kind of been our our thing is it's like almost having a mary poppins bag of methods you know we have we'll have low tech we'll have high tech we have now because he writes we can just have a pad of pad and paper i'm trying to get to where I like changed the code on all of the i devices to my phone number. So if someone hands him, if he's somewhere, someone hands him a, an iPhone, the first thing he'll do is try to unlock it with my phone number. So um, I, and then we've taught him to do that in the phone app itself. Of course, we've only done it a couple of times and he normally, as soon as I pick up, he hangs up on me, but <laughs> you know, we're baby, baby steps. And also it probably sure. feels like, why are you calling me from the living room? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, but everybody, and at different times, uses different methods with him, for sure. Um, for the most part, like, and what and what we've noticed is EJ also picks up on what people want to hear a little bit. So, like, if we're, like, the three of us back in the day when, um, you know, and now again, we, you could go to, like, Disneyland or California Adventure. We, we would just, now we set the iPad down or hand it to him. Because if I wanted to go to Soren and Christian wanted to go to whatever, he would be like, Soren? Like kind of looking at us. And I'm like, no, you decide, we're asking you. So that's the other thing about really working on that other piece of, it's got to transfer to other people and it's got to transfer back to you, you know? So um, there he is. <laughs> so the, uh, so the, the main thing being, and then, and then interestingly, at one point he was going so fast, people couldn't read what he was spelling. Mm. And especially like, um, so we have like an extended family where his dad and stepmom live back East. Mm. She actually met up with us in, in Texas for training two or three times. So basically like EJ would work all morning with, 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 uh, you know, her, Mm. And I'd be, we'd be trying to train and we'd be watching. And then in the evenings working with his stepmom, with me helping because he was going to spend, a, you know, he spends usually a, a month there except for like last summer because of COVID and everything, mm. but usually spends about a month there. And she is so good with him, mm. fully can support any level of communication. Um, every single one of the siblings is that kind of slightly different places, but they know they can actually, especially if you break it down to like giving him choices or something like that, for sure. The funniest thing, not funny, but you know, my husband, English is his second language. And so when EJ's spelling fast, there's, yeah. he's like, I, sorry. Mm-hmm. And so I said, oh, when, it, when that happens to me and I can't read it fast, cause sometimes he's doing it backwards and I'm like, you know, trying to look. Um, mm. I've had, I've also, we've also worked on sign language so he can finger spell it to me in sign language. Oh, wow. And the thing with that is because that's, that's still slower. I can read it. I can see it. So my first instinct is EJ walked over to where my husband was and, and um, spelled something. Hmm. And he's like, eh. you know, was like wow. and I said, I said, hold on, finger spell it. And then, and then Sam said, wait, just write it. And he handed him a piece of a pad of paper and a pencil to write it and it was suddenly like so funny to me that I didn't that didn't even come to me to think uh-huh. that because the finger spelling thing started when I, we realized that when he could pair something motor wise with the sounds it helped him to have mm. that that pairing so mm. we taught like the lord's prayer all in sign language to get to get the sounds out it's so interesting um, I don't know if it's similar to like wiggle your toes, you know, like the chiropractor tells you to wiggle your toes so you'll relax. Yeah. I feel like some of that was like, you're doing something else with your body. So now you can just kind of relax and let the sounds out or whatever it was. We know that the speech centers and the motor cortex are super related also, obviously. Right. Maybe it was just also the, the, the whole growth uh, development. Maybe it was just, it was just the time as well, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, looking at, at um, you know, you mentioned uh, EJ and his growth. Is he still at school now or is he at a, uh, is he learning somewhere else? Um, we, so as of second grade, he's going into ninth. We wow. have homeschooled him. Okay. So yeah, we homeschool through a public charter. So we still have to do all the placement tests, all of the uh, state tests. So, um, although we didn't do seventh grade state tests, obviously, because of, of COVID and everything, mm. uh, but we did the sixth grade state test and, and I, as the parent, couldn't be there. So somebody else was there. Sure. Um, and then he just had all the accommodations. He could have snacks. He could have, you know, oh, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, what was funny was he was just like, I think, just excited about the opportunity because we were ready to like, he, they were all set to give him like a 15 minute break every 45 yeah. minutes or whatever, that sort of thing. He just plowed through like four or five hours. And it was finally the other people in the room who was the proctor, which was his homeschool teacher and his communication partner were like, can we break and have some food now? Because they didn't have the accommodation of snacks, only he did. So they were the uh, ones that actually got hungry. And then like he came out, you know, jumped you, around a little bit, went right back in. You know what I mean? Asking, uh, how do you do? How's he been doing uh, at home? I mean, he's doing really, really well. He actually uh, placed above average, like in the green. You know the you yeah. know how the tests were. The colors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wow. he placed way way up there, and so they were really really happy. Um, he just did his star three sixty tests, and same thing. He's all in the, all in the green, so we're happy about that. And I always worry that I feel like toward the end of those things he's guessing, and I'm like, mm. but I don't want to I don't want to interject. But I'm sitting there just to make sure he's like navigating everything, right? And so I'm like, I don't know about that. And then we get the scores. I'm like, oh, you, know, you were right. And, <laughs> And some of it I really don't even remember, like some of the math that they're already showing him in eighth yeah. grade. I'm kind of like, I got to like kind of tune myself up on those things. But um, yeah, actually, oddly enough, we jumped in feeling like, uh, you know, we need to first of all support all of our therapists, but we jumped into distance learning and uh, virtual therapy. Okay. With both feet, we had several views going on for OT, for piano, for different things. And, um, and it was very seamless for him. And I think the not having the commute allowed us to like, we broke our speech into half hour sessions. So that was more productive. And also it forced me to really learn how, like to make yourself get in there and do it. So I think that's right. the other thing is it, it's easy to sit back and just kind of watch, but once you're actually in there, um, and, and having to do it. So I learned, I feel like I did a semester long, you know, course on on prompt the first half of the the pandemic to be honest so like now if he's having trouble with a word i can just show him how to prompt it and he can prompt himself sabrina um would there be anything else you, i had a uh, i had noticed that you have spoken to the idea of working with students with disabilities and speech autism but you actually have spoken to a wider audience as well, wider general uh, education in the sense of the one thing I learned, pay attention to goals. I already know that, but we want to reiterate, pay attention to the goals that you write because there's an individual behind this. And another thing that I think is true across the board is high interest materials to read. That is so true. Um, I'm going to Google naked mole rat after this, by the way. <laughs> Good lesson. Is there something else that comes to mind that would probably a general ed teacher can also benefit that you learned while working um, in the ACA and in the board and in uh, communication skills? Yeah, I think, I think it just really speaks to multimodal, multi-sensory learning, which we just know is, um, you know, one of the things is not realizing which kids are going to learn best by hearing it, seeing it, doing it, all of that. So the more you can wrap all of those things in, that's really a big part of, of all of the supportive methods as well, is that they take all of that into consideration. And I think the, bigger, the biggest picture is when we look at, um, you know, why aren't we supporting all the students to success and then, you know, mm. kind of scale, and then, you know, removing ourselves or fading fading that out. And I think one of the examples um, 
we I'm, we also have started working with a, a piano method that was originally developed for you know um, learners with disabilities, but now it could be used for anyone, anyone who is not already sight reading standard notation, which is actually the vast majority of the population, right? Could sit down and play a song. And so like EJ's lesson on Friday, he, he played 14 or 15 songs in one half hour lesson using this method. What's the name of the method, so Sabrina? What's the name it's of called, the- It's called Occupational Octaves. And it was developed by a man in New York named Lee Stockner. And he actually has a published paper in a brain sciences um, journal. A uh, and mm -hmm. it is, the whole concept is classical piano playing as a pathway to flow states for learners with disabilities. But it's not just, it could be anybody because mm -hmm. when you can, when you're able to make your hands do something and create something and it's pleasing to your ear, ideally, mm -hmm. um, there's such a satisfaction in that. And not only are you working with rhythm, but we know that music more than anything else, more things are firing in your brain with music more than anything else on earth, right? And so when you can create that music and you're coordinating all that fine motor skill. So we actually started piano and typing with multiple fingers because we were just doing it as a fine motor skill. It was just um, I'm like, hey, here's a cool OT goal, you know, and then lo and behold, um, realizing, you know, how much how happy and satisfied and this is like wow what a great way to build confidence too which we know is a huge piece of the puzzle a huge piece of the puzzle for and uh for not just you know kids with disabilities and stuff like that yeah. and so yeah realizing that it could also play in with um a friend was here and he's like 70 and i was telling him about it, he goes wait i could probably do that and then you suddenly, I, 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 I sent, you know, Lee a text and he's like, oh yeah, we've already been talking about like going into nursing homes. And I'm like, what about like a buddy system, like a, a kid with autism and like a, you know, senior citizen and they're, they can like get together and show each other what they've learned that week. And, you know, when, when we can all get together and those kinds of things, because I thought how neat that this music, the way it's spelled out, because it's basically blocks, boxes, like your right hand is the top look row of boxes, your left hand's the bottom row, and then it's colored, colored based on which finger you're using. And there are these little rings that you put on your fingers. Well, when we got the method, when we first started homeschooling like five years ago or something, EJ did have, wanted nothing to do with these rings. So I put them on his fingers, he's like, you know, just mm -hmm. get those off of me. And so um, it was just the beginning of last year, right before lockdown and everything, I started putting marker, like just ma magic marker for the different mm -hmm. hands. He's fine with that. He's totally cool with drawing on himself. That's fine. <laughs> so we like got it, all the colors that way. And then the letters, so they actually correspond to the actual letter notes. But as you go up octaves, it'll go like lowercase um, C with a star on it. You know what I mean? Like as you get up higher in the, in the music. And so EJ is already like, cause you start in, the, in this very middle C like butterfly position and he's already moving out this way. Wow. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a really cool method because um, I played a piece of like a classical piece I could have never read in I can only read the right right hand from like singing and guitar I can't read the bass clef so I played a little piece like one page of a classical piece I just jumped ahead in the books and stuff and I was like I took a big exhale afterward I was like ah. and I thought oh that's it that's the beginning of this idea of of flow states, which is basically what we always throw around as regulation, right? Like, are they regulated? Are, but are they enjoying what they're doing? And if, if they can do it calmly, like, how do we help do that? Uh, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. You said flow states, correct? That's, mm -hmm. it, it also sounds like the name of a, you know, cool band. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Occupation, yeah no, it's, it's called occupational octaves. So people can look that up online and then uh, you know, maybe, cause I know Kimberly was asking and she's like, Jacob, we gotta do this. I go, you know, Sabrina 
is doing it, you know, yeah. we're going we're gonna to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the coolest thing is, is I was thinking in my head, well, and you know me, Jacob, it's like, oh my yeah. God, this thing works. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to get trained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I was already thinking that in my mind. And then Lee, he texted me and he was like, oh, we got to get you going on this and blah, blah, blah. I can totally see you um, teaching and then like uh, having EJ demonstrate. I'm like, yeah, because he plays better than I do at this point. So, you know, um, how, how that could all work. So it was, it was bizarre because it was like, he was thinking of it at the same time and he has all of this stuff set up. So I've, I had already started using it um because some of my kids that were working on typing i'm like wait do you want to do some piano too because that is all gonna help it's yeah. all gonna help and so that's how it kind of got started and we just did the markers instead of the rings because that to have that be a stopping point you know when i look back at that i'm like well that was silly why did i stop there but it wasn't until the beginning of last year i thought about the colors mm. and then there was a handful of kids i did get started and then everything kind of closed down and and a few of them I've kept, I've kept going with virtually, but some of them, it's just hard. Sure. But now I feel like I've learned a lot because he's teaching, he's in New York. He's teaching us totally virtually wow. and, um, and teaching EJ. And then meanwhile, he's like, the best way to learn this is the fa is what you're doing right now, which is you are sitting watching me teach your son. And then you're working with your son after mm -hmm. practicing right. and all that. He's like, that's already like, huge i know right already that gideon is not going to want those on at least for right now oh, yeah so i'm no, thinking totally. i just learned from you i'm like okay we'll put the marker on his fingers <laughs> oh yeah and 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 the first time i did that i had tagged him in a post or something on instagram and he actually shared it and he's like this mom in california is not using the rings because her son couldn't tolerate it and she's using marker like that's a great idea you know um more of his students seem to be a little bit on the, they were like the speaking side, so they didn't have as much of the sensory um, aversions, right? It didn't have quite, it, it, it's sometimes it goes like hand in hand. Or, But I really think it wasn't until EJ could really see end game that he's like, okay, I'll wear the ring, right? Oh, okay. But I, it was, it, it, did, it did, it took a while. We didn't start wearing the rings until he reached out to us. We were still coloring mm. and doing different things. And he reached out to us because um, he wanted help putting together a music book with Christian music. And like, he saw that I was doing that. I was translating his, I was translating Christian music into his method so EJ could play church music. And so EJ could even play like Psalms and all of these things. And, um, and he's, he, so that's why he reached out and he said, I will teach you and your son if you can help me put this book together. And I'm like, that's a no brainer. I think I've done like 25 pieces already. Right. So, wow. <laughs> so wow. it's just like super, uh, just, just lucky and just lucky to be able to learn from the person that created it. I know right and there. Then, that's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's really, it's really great. And the paper itself, it's on his website. You can read the, the paper as well. Because flow states, it's basically like, imagine that place. Um, we've all hopefully been there at some point. Off the top of my head, I can't think of like one where I've been in recently, but where you're just like, you're in the zone. You're like in the optimal zone. You can learn things. You can do things. You're feeling that kind of confidence. And it, it basically that's what flow states is it's like that optimal learning space sabrina i'm already imagining that i'm using i'm going to use that expression now <laughs> I'm, I'm really in a flow state right now <laughs> don't interrupt me i'm just digging at hey yeah. ruby could we put this on the uh on the on the uh, youtube the the actual um you know the link to occupational uh octaves yep that'd be great hey sabrina do you mind if we go down a, another little path for a moment Sure. Uh, and you know where I, you know, once I ask this question, you know where I'm going to go here. Uh, what's your favorite Power Ranger? Who, oh. color is your, what color is your favorite Power Ranger? You know, I'm going in there. Favorite Power Ranger. Um, that's tough, huh? Then maybe that's too personal. That is tough. And you, you is know, tough. you'll tell us why it's personal in a second. <laughs> no, you know what's interesting is I think, uh, the character herself all um i played a villain right in the power rangers and the character herself always had it probably would have say the black ranger because that's the one that she tried to lure into um 
the uh, the vice versa dance, right? The the girls ask the boys dance, and so I think that was probably one of her favorites. But I I personally, I mean, I'm partial to um, the Red Ranger because he was kind of the leader of the gang and everything. And he had a lot of responsibility. I'll I'll be honest, in the movie, it was very different to me. Um, I always definitely I've I have identified with uh, the Yellow Ranger. Interestingly, is almost always at least in the beginning the female ethnic ranger. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's always been sort of interesting to me that they di they moved away from the Yellow Ranger being Asian and the Black Ranger being black, and they went ah. to they went to the opposite. They decided yes, now the well just that's that's silly. The Yellow Ranger will be black and the Black Ranger will be Asian. So oh they boy. kind of like, that's how they flipped it. But it was just kind of, and it, it was, it was, you know, what, the yeah. 90s, early 90s. So um, I always thought it was really funny because I think I got cast in things based on that makeup, this idea of, okay, we got, we have the, the handsome white guy. We have kind of the smart or, you know, funny sidekick white guy. We have the black guy. We have the, um, the white girl and we have the Asian girl. And that was the exact kind of makeup of the original Power Rangers. And then I got cast in a show with the exact same breakdown of people, you know? And it was so funny to me. I'm like, we, do you, does anyone else realize that we are the gender and ethnic makeup of the original Power Rangers? Like someone decided this was like that right. combination. And so, um, but interestingly, uh, I think that, 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 it was so long ago, like it's now, now when sure. you think about it in today's climate, it seems ludicrous, but at the time it was like, oh, that's cool. Everybody's like, you know, represented and, you know. Oh, it, it wouldn't fly today. It wouldn't fly, I don't think. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No. You can't but, do that now. <laughs> and your and your your character again was, um, what was the name of the character? Uh, Sc Scorpina. S Scorpina, that's right. Now, I, now your work in the theater and in film, and uh, I see you uh, dancing and singing um, online. How do you think that's helped you with working with EJ and, and even with um, the, our kids? Well, you know, it's funny because I think for one thing, you, you so need to be on your toes and um, in teaching, mm. right? Because a lesson can go any which way and you have to be ready for that. And I think if there's one part of acting training that helps you with that, it's improv, mm. improvisational classes. And I love improv actually is one of my favorite classes I ever took as as an actor um and I really think that that's so important I think also being able to like suddenly just like break into song if you know because if you can sometimes if like if you get into a weird loop or something or so you can feel some dysregul dis dysregulation coming but you know they're a huge fan of the little mermaid or something. So let's let's talk about the Little Mermaid for a little bit, and then you can like you know sing a line or something like that. Or you know, I think Gideon even wrote some melodies and things um, in music, and yeah. to be able to hear them, create them, and play them, sing them, like all of those kinds of things. I mean, obviously, I think all of us do that. We all have our you know bag of tricks. We all have our our hat that we're pulling things out of that go with our what we're passionate about, what are, where our talents lie. And when we can bring that into the teaching and bring that to our students. And even if it's just something where it kind of like throws them for a second, like, what, did you just sing that? <laughs> Weren't we talking about like, were we, I, all I can think about is naked mole rats, but did she just sing something about naked mole rats? You know, just to kind of like, just a, a little bit of something else going on. Cause sometimes it's just like, pull the attention away Absolutely. from where it's going, you know, to pull the attention. Them like that, it, it really brings them to attention, yeah. gives them, I put a smile on their on their mouth. It's 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 a useful tool, yeah. Yeah, sometimes just the silliest little things will will really help. But I I would say that would that'd be my thought. I mean, I think EJ also um, because a lot of times in our teaching, I'll be like, EJ, can I videotape this? Because I think this would be really helpful. And so he has this sense too that he's a little bit of a like a media superstar because he's like he'll. Um, he'll turn to the Zoom, uh, like he'll play a song really well. And even if it's just he and I, because sometimes I have Zoom on or I'm recording us or doing something like that, you'll, he'll literally be like, you know, just like turn and like smile or turn to the camera. And so I think that uh, 
he's he's so used to to that idea that you know yeah. we share these things if they can help our friends and people that would, we don't even know yet we mm-hmm. share these things because um you know they could be helpful oh yeah and i think like you shared like you used your past to kind of help you know, where you're at with your, with your son. I was just thinking as you're talking, I went, well, Kimberly was a theater major too. And I, I think that's why she's a rock star. Like, so, although you don't have to have theater or your background, but obviously to take students there, it's helpful, but of course you don't need to, but, uh, but I, I, I do want to thank you for being with us, but before you go, um, before we, we close up for today, I, and Ruben, tell me if you have another question, but I, I do want to thank you publicly, uh, for, um, just being on and being, uh, just a, a, a true friend to us and uh, throughout the years with our IEPs and, and so forth. I want the, I want the audience to know uh, what, you, what you mean to the, the Aguilar family, which is, I can't even, words can't express, but and thank you for that. And um, also if anybody who's watching this video, if you want to go ahead and uh, uh, we, we have a, um, on Facebook, we have a group, uh, I guess you call it a group, right? A uh, pot and deliver group. If you want to DM me regarding more information on support, support communication methods, please let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll send you a message that way. And uh, Ruben, anything else before we go? No, just thank you. It's uh, the, some of the concepts that you're discussing regarding special ed is very useful. And mm-hmm. um, it's a question that keeps popping up. And we, any data like that, any information shared like that is, I know a lot of people will be, will benefit from it. So thank you, Sabrina. Yeah, thank you. And I think the thing too is, is always, you know, trying to have that communication with those teachers you're working with. And, you know, I like the way you approach it. You're always positive in the way you talk to staff and, and you know that they have the best interest for your child, but at the same time, sometimes, you know, parents see, parents see things that maybe the educators don't see. <laughs> so we're the yeah. number one and teacher. I've, I'm always really, really happy to, um, to lend sort of, cause here's the thing, it is completely different when it is your own child. You are, and the problem is in IEPs, um, I don't wanna say that some of the people in the room can smell your fear, but they can smell your emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and, and sadly to say, sometimes they are right away either put in a position of being defensive mm-hmm. instead of helpful. And, they, um, and so I feel like when I've been able to help is because I've been on both sides so much now with so many IEPs and it's such a unique perspective because you know there was a very sweet video that was going around I know I'm going over sorry no, 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 <laughs> there no. was a very sweet video that was going around of like I think she was an OT or an SLP I can't remember and she basically it was her telling parents not to be so upset about their IEPs that they that these you know, we know these tests are, your child is not their, um, their test score. Your child is not their standardized this. Your child is not, um, and basically telling parents, you know, I know you, like I just left an IEP and the mom was in tears and this, that, and the other. And um, all, and instead of, and, and what I wanted to say, and everyone was like, oh, it's so true. I'm so, and I get it. She's very sweet. I, and I have nothing <laughs> against her as a person or anything like that. But my, my entire reaction was, so if the tests do not show what our children really are and what they're accomplishing and what they're doing and their actual successes, why don't we change the tests? Why don't we do find measures that actually measure where they're at so that you can set a goal, right? So instead of, you know, um, EJ had this, this I, part of his psyche eval, he was doing his try this year, was these tiny little boxes. And he was supposed to match the number with the little figure at the top and then draw this kind of complex little figure in this tiny little box which is already smaller than he's even got as his OT goal to write a letter. And now he's got to write an alien little figure, right? (laughs) And it's so, imagine if you will, one of those um, like decoder games where you get a secret code and it's all these pictures and then it says happy Halloween or whatever, right? It's basically that, but with no payoff because you're not going to actually make a message. You're going to just take like this thing and match it to that and then draw it in this square. And so the interesting thing was, the idea was you would be scored on how many you did. 
in order. And as soon as you left a blank, that's the end of your score. So, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Well, EJ started to do a couple. Then he realized he could do the little weird squiggle for the number four. So he started to look ahead and found all the number fours and he made the little squiggle, right? And so his score was something like less than a two-year-old or whatever, right? And then the interesting thing was the, the nice thing about our, our team was that the, the psych, the school psych actually said, to be honest, what EJ did showed a higher level of thinking and strategy and critical thinking because he realized what he could do. And if his goal was eventually to fill this page, he would have if he had been given more time, but mm. this was a timed test. Mm. And I'm like, so here's his accommodation for more time on his IEP, but he can't get that on this test. So he got like four or something like that, <laughs> right? And he's less than two years old. It's just like things like that that just boggle the mind. Or there was a, a speech um, intelligibility test, which I actually went and made the bar graphs from the 2020 data to the 2021 data. It was dramatic, absolutely dramatic, the difference. Mm. But they said, this test can only be scored for ages seven and under. And I'm like, so he can't, he can't be scored because it's, and they're like, no, um, because it was almost like saying, once they hit eight, if they're not talking, we don't think they're gonna talk. Oh. Right. It was it was a very bizarre thing to realize that. So he just so why did we put him through this test? Yeah. And they're like, well, we knew he would do so much better this year. And so I said, OK, well, I'm going to take the raw data and I'm taking that back to the school. So this was our with our medical. And then um, I took the raw data to the school IEP and I got him 90 minutes of speech through the school. Because hmm. I said, look what he's accomplished in this last year, because the speech therapist at our school uh, when he was first, when he was eval three years ago, said, you know, he's, he's doing so well with his AAC, let's just put all the eggs in that basket and he's not going to get any speech, hmm. regular speech at all. Because, um, which we were kind of fine with at the time because we were going to get more time with the AT. So we were like, okay, cool. But then, so we still have all that time and now we've added back in speech because he was able to say the letters for the answers for his academic testing. And the person on the other end who had never met him before understood him. Wow. And, um, and I didn't even like force it at all. We were just kind of waiting around. We had everything. We had all of the AAC, we had everything around him. And he showed pictures. He said, which of these shows unity? You know, cause he's looking at like his grade level vocabulary. And EJ just turned to looked at it and said, C. <laughs> Yeah. And this guy didn't know EJ, so he's just writing the answers down and just going through it. And then um, at the end of it, I told him, I said, he has never done that before. A person that's never met him understood purposefully, hmm. intelligibly, the letters of these answers that he's saying, wow. right? So yeah, just like stuff like that, but it's, well, it's maybe very, very interesting. As you're talking here, as we're ending here, I, I'm realizing, uh, Sabrina, that maybe this is your next step is to we, to revamp these tests. <laughs> Maybe that's another, I mean, we laugh, but you know what? There's something to that. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was like, I was telling someone, I said, I said, all of you, you know, SLPs are master level, masters level educated. They could be working on these things, right? Yeah, for sure. For so. sure. Well, listen, with that, I want to thank you again for being our guest. And uh, I know we'll be, we will be chatting, uh, um, hopefully for a lifelong. We, and um, again, thank you. And uh, we uh, hope you have a wonderful night. And thank you for being our guest. Thank Bye. you for having me. <laughs> Great. All right, guys. Bye-bye.